Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here. I hope that uh, you guys are, um, you know, getting your day off to a good start. And uh, I know that a lot of people are still uh, in the bed, you know, relaxing and, you know, recovering from the week. And I understand all of that. But I actually want to talk to you about uh, the, the manner in which you engage each and every day and starting with when you get up. Look, if you want a better life, it begins with the standards that you set. See, if you want something consistently that you don't have that is of a higher standard, of a higher level, the way that you get it in simplicity is you raise your standards your standard of excellence, your excellence, your standard of performance, your standard of engagement. In other words, there is a requirement to demand more of yourself. One of the ways that most people fail to raise their standards and demand more of themselves is simply in when they start their day. Um, you know, I have a saying and, 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 and I've had this saying forever and it's been because of different reasons as I've evolved. And now I live with this collective understanding of this importance. But as a child growing up, uh, being parented by my great grandparents, uh, parents who literally worked the fields, uh, you know, uh, as uh, my grandfather was the son of a sharecropper, uh, born in he was born in 1909, and so he was up no later than five every morning. My grandmother owned her own beauty shop. She came from a sawmill town in Texas where they were up and working at five o'clock. And she was up and going to her shop and opening her shop that early every morning. And so I was always out of the bed as far back as I can remember. And I was taught that you don't sleep in. And, uh, you know, and my wife will tell you that if I ever say, man, I'm sleeping in today, that means I'm probably gonna stay in bed until maybe seven at the most. So. Right about now, Central Standard Time is seven o'clock. This will be the latest. It's still dark outside uh, during this time of the year, moving towards the winter solstice. Um, it's still dark outside. Uh, and I would still, you know, and I would actually be out of the bed, whatever the case, by this time. You know, I've been up now for uh, two hours. And, you know, I've done my priming. I've done all those things. But I was taught that. And now what I tell people is if you're in the bed uh, in the morning when the sun comes up, you've already missed an opportunity. Uh, you've missed an opportunity to advance your dreams, to advance your visions, to advance your purpose, uh, to make some moves in life that will put you where you say you want to be. If you're still in bed when the sun comes up, you're already behind in your day. Uh, and, you know, and the thing is, is I understand that, you know, that there's a need to have moments in time, in time during the week where you're recuperating. I understand that you need that. But me, seven days a week, I'm up before the sun comes up. The sun doesn't beat me up and, you know, and it's just simply a standard that I have. And there are places that I study myself on a regular basis. Every day I'm taking an examination of where I'm at. And there's still places I need to raise my standards. And when I recognize it or I see it, and it speaks to me, I have a responsibility to raise my standards. Most people don't see the power in the day. There's a saying that says that the morning breeze has a secret to tell you. And most of us miss it because we're not up to catch the morning breeze. There is a lot of benefit in getting up early in the morning. Number one, the first thing that I can tell you is that that alone and quiet time is a time for you to establish the proper mindset through which you're going to engage your day. The state of mind, the state of emotion, the, 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 the spiritual state you're in when you start your day is going to determine how you engage your day. If you wake up and you're late and you're rushing, you're already frenetic and unglued trying to get things going and trying to catch up so you don't, you're don't, you not behind for that meeting. And we live in a world where even on Saturdays, there are meetings, there are places you have to be. It may not be your job, but you have places you have to be. And if you wake up at the last minute, you're rushing, you don't have a time to set your state. But I'm going to tell you something else that happens when you wake up late, something that most people never even think about. When you wake up late, you're pushed to respond to the need of you being wherever it is you need to be. And what that leads to is the failure to set your intent for the day. 
what is your intent? And when you don't have an idea of what your intent is, you tend to be moved about and carried about by your situation and your circumstances and whatever is demanding your attention. Now, have you ever had that time? Have you ever had that moment in time where there, there are things you know you need to get done, but you wake up and you're kind of in a rush, you look around and life has you, you're moving from one thing to another, and this thing happens, somebody calls you and there's a problem over here, somebody says, hey, I need you to do this, and I look at that, and you look up at the end of, the, end of your day and your entire day was busy, but you didn't get anything done. That's because you didn't wake up early enough to set your intent. You didn't wake up early enough to sit down and get into your thoughts to have a moment with the creator on whatever level you have your moments on. I'm, I'm not here to tell a person how they should see God or see the supreme being of the universe. I'm saying that you need to have a relationship with the supreme being of the universe that's really truly truth and, and, and close and intimate to you, that you have that connectivity because it's in that connectivity with an infinite power that gives you the confidence. When you understand that relationship and when you can connect your purpose, when you can connect your destiny to this infinite power, that's where your confidence comes from. But you need time. Uh, we all talk about relationships, quote unquote, with God. But relationships are built with, by time spent with. So you, you can't have a strong relationship with your wife if you talk to her once a day. You can't have a strong and impactful relationship with your children if you talk to them every now and then over the course of a week. You can't have very powerful, impactful social relationships and business relationships through sporadic communication. So how is it that you can have an uh, infinitely powerful and substantially effective relationship with the Supreme Being when your communication is almost nil? It is impossible. You've got to have an understanding. And I'm not telling you how this exists. I'm not, that's not, but you better find a way. You better find a way to get one-on-one -on -one with an understanding of why you're here and the power you have. And that comes from understanding the supreme existence and how you are connected with it and how it, 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 it has given you a sense of divinity in and of yourself to achieve the things for which you were designed to achieve. Hey, Tia, how's it going? I see, uh, hey, uh, uh, Isaiah, look, let me explain something to you. If you're not up before the sun is up, you've missed your first opportunity at a minimum, maybe two, depending on how late you get up. Second of all, you haven't established uh, your intent for the day. You haven't established your state for the day. You will be governed by the situations and circumstances that you encounter as you move about your day. You're going to be tossed to and fro. You're going to have this unequal a uh, 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 state or existence that moves you based on what you're experiencing. You know, if something good happens, you're happy, then something else comes along, you get a text message and say, this deal fell through, now you're sad, you get, a, you get all these things and you have no control over how you're feeling and how you're engaging it and how you're dealing with it. And, and what you have to understand is you've got to get up early enough to sit up and say, look, I need to be focused. I need to have a sense of where I'm at. I need to have a sense of what I'm doing. I need to have a sense of intent of what I am going to accomplish for the day. Uh, T, I see that you said finding your purpose isn't easy uh, for a lot of people. And the thing is, it's because most people are focusing or looking or trying to discover a purpose through all of the wrong reasons. Most people are are, are in alignment with some of something someone else gave them. They're functioning from the limiting beliefs that someone else pushed upon them. They're operating within the restrictions of a box somebody put them in. They are sitting up and trying to accomplish something they were told would be their best opportunity and possibility in life to do something because that's how we operate in this standard and in this culture is that somebody tells you what you're capable of and you pretty much align with that, you accept it, and you live a lot of your life trying to do something somebody else told you to do instead of looking inside. See, it's really not that difficult to discover your purpose when you truly are willing to look inside of yourself and separate yourself or disconnect yourself from the need of, uh, of having the approval and the approbation and the validation and confirmations of other people. See, when you are trying to fit in 
when you are trying to be accepted, it's real difficult to find your uh, purpose and your passion. Why? Because you're trying to make everybody else happy. You're trying to fulfill something that may not be connected with you. What you got to do is escape from the need to be validated by someone else. Escape from the need of, of, of being uh, approved and accepted and popular. You've got to look inside of you. See, the thing that you just absolutely love to do, the thing you get giddy about just mentioning it, the thing that you are so naturally gifted to do that the genius inside of you just does it automatically. Yeah, you may need to refine it. Yeah, you may need to advance it and, and expand it, but that is indicative of your purpose. Your gift is always indicative of your purpose. Your genius is always indicative of your purpose. That gift and that genius was given to you to carry out your purpose. So when you can discover within yourself, not the thing somebody told you to do, not, some, not the thing somebody, because a lot of you have a purpose that other people have already talked you out of early in life because they couldn't see it. See, that's one of the problems we have. We, we, we spend a lot of time around people who can't see anything for themselves, but how in the world are they possibly going to see anything for you? So what they do is they tell you, man, that's not realistic. You know, it sounds good, but how many people have ever done it before? See, the wonderful thing is that if you don't do at least one thing in your life that nobody's ever done before, you failed yourself. You failed yourself, you failed your designer, you failed your creator. That, be, that should be something on the inside that literally opens up and speaks to you. And that's what I love about waking up in the morning. Like I said, there's this thing that says the, sun, the, the morning breeze has a secret to tell you. See, when you wake up early enough in the morning where there's not a lot of activity around you, when it's quiet and you can still go back into what was uh, taking place in your subconscious while you were sleeping, there were some ideas that roam through your mind that in, in, in a moment, after you get out of that bed and get the stirring and the phone beeps and the phone rings or the kids say, well, I need, I want, I got, I need, and, 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 the, and the significant other, the wife, the, uh, the, the husband, the, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, or whatever is saying, hey, can you help me do this? And, and all of this stuff. And then before you know it, that thing that was there, that idea that could have changed your life, could have changed the life of other people, it's gone. Why? Because you woke up in the stir of things. Wake up when the stillness is holding you steady and you can examine your thoughts and you can correct erroneous thinking and you can establish a sense of stability and understanding that you were built for something, that you were designed for something, that there's something special in this world that you were designed to accomplish when you are able to sit up and wake up in a time when you are controlling the moment and when you can retain your personal sovereignty. You set the intent. You set the level of engagement. You set how you're going to respond to any information, data, or news that comes your way, no matter how good or bad it is. You set it. You get ready to take on the day. You win the first hour. You win the day. But if you get up and now you're at the mercy of your situations, your circumstances, the things that are coming at you, you're going to be highly reactive instead of responsive. So if it, it, it's uh, it's about really truly being true to the designer versus being true to the people around you that want to push you into a box and tell you what you can and cannot do. And see, that may mean that you may have to sever some ties and distance yourself in some relationships. That is sometimes what has to happen in order for you to truly become everything that you're capable of being. You've got to divorce yourself from the need of getting approved by someone else, validated by someone else, earning the approbation of someone else, letting someone else co-sign what it is you believe you should be doing. You've got to have enough confidence in who you are to step out solely and alone and go after what you know you should be going after. And when you do that, and when you seize that, and when you become who it is you're becoming, you will attract people who will stand with you. You will attract the people who will walk with you. You will attract the people who will encourage you and, and, and affirm you, but you can't look at people who can't see beyond what is in front of them and expect them to see the destiny that's so great for you. Look, stop hitting the snooze button. And I, I know personally how alluring the snooze button is. Stop hitting it. Stop hitting the snooze button. Set a time to get up when the alarm clock gets up. I mean, when the alarm clock goes off, get up. You know, I've got a couple of clients now I'm working with on that. And, and the wonderful thing about it is when you follow 
the real, I mean, simple plan that I put out about how, uh, how to get up in the morning for, for these people who say I'm not a morning person. And what both of them are telling me now is what I've always heard. Once you start to do this, you get into that about that second week, guess what starts to happen? You actually start to wake up probably in anticipation of the alarm going off about five minutes or so before it does. And so it doesn't jerk you up. It doesn't get you up in a sl sleepy stripper that makes you want to say, man, I just got to have 10 more minutes to hit the booze button. When you start to train yourself, when you understand and connect yourself before you go to sleep with your passion and the purpose for getting up in the morning, it all aligns and it even, it even impacts how you sleep. And so sleep with a purpose. And, and, and obviously, you're not going to be doing this with your consciousness because the more you go into a deeper sleep, the further you get away from consciousness altogether. And now you're subconscious, and that's a powerful place to be if you know how to handle this thing. You can really set yourself up that the vast majority of the training for yourself is done while you're asleep and when you first wake up. Going into sleep, there's a state of theta when you're going out of consciousness into sleep where your subconscious mind is completely vulnerable to suggestion. Auto-suggestion, auto-hypnosis is the perfect time right there. That 30-minute phase where you're falling asleep and you're not conscious of what's going on around, you may hear a couple of things that you fall off, that state right there, that state, of, that's where your uh, brain is actually capable of uploading or uploading new information and, and, and into the subconscious and making it a part of the program that you're running every day. So powerful, all of this stuff around sleep. But you've got to take control of it. You don't let life dictate to you. You don't let your circumstances dictate to you. One of the biggest problems that most of you are having is that you're waking up and life is telling you what you're going to do next. Instead of you establishing how you're going to engage life and, and, and on what level you're going to do it. If you want your life to change, it comes. It, it, it's real simple of how you do it. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you carry out this, but it starts with raising your standard. What is the standard for performance? One of the standards, uh, one of the elements of performance is when you wake up during the day. Uh, if you wake up at nine o'clock, you're not going to have the as an effective day as the person that wakes up at five. I'm sorry. I'll tell people all the time that I get more done by nine o'clock than most people get done all day. And I definitely have the things that are most important done by nine. Then I'm following through on some of the things that I set up before nine and some of the things that came over from the, the previous day. That's what I'm finishing up after that point. And I am in a situation before I get my first phone call or check my emails. I've done so much because I beat most people up. You know, and, 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 and I'm up before most people. And that's something you got to do. And, you know, and, and I'm, I'm harping on that because that's what this video is about is how many opportunities are you losing because you're still in the bed? I know, especially when we're getting into these moving towards the winter months, when the temperature starts to drop and, and, and that bed is just calling you. And then it's like a weekend day for those of you who have jobs or have businesses that function Monday through Friday. You know, I don't have to be out of this bed right now. I can. But then uh, see, the thing is, the, wh while you're operating on a linear uh, time, chrono linear t chronological uh, calendar where everything happens on certain days at certain times, opportunity in life and the universe is functioning completely and holistically every second that you are alive. And so just because it's Saturday doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity waiting on you. Just because it's Sunday doesn't mean that everything is turned off and you can just cruise through the day and sit back and, you know, maybe some of you go to church, some of you sit up and get ready for game day, whatever it is that there's more to it than that. And you have to understand, you've got to be primed and in position to receive the opportunities or engage the opportunities that are sitting in front of you. That is so, 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 so important. You've got to understand that, yeah, you know, for the, for the sake of being able to operate and function with one another, we come up with a linear and chronological calendar that says, okay, on these days, this happens, and then this day, you know, the weekend is all great and everything, but sometimes the greatest opportunities come on the weekend. More people are available, more people are, are le less engaged and, and more open. I mean, it's so many things that come into it. And then simply just being willing to get up and engage it. And say, man, but oh, man, I need some time. Let your body talk to you. And one thing that my grandfather used to do 
that I practice now a little differently, but the pretty much, you know, with the same principle is my grandfather's rule was you got to be out of the bed no later than 630, period. I don't care what day it is during the summer. I know you don't got school, but you're going to be up. You're going to make sure that everything that you need to do for the day, all your chores, if it's a garbage, they take the garbage out. If the lawn needs to be raked, rake the lawn. Uh, if it needs to be cut, cut it. Whatever it is that you have that you're responsible for doing, get up and do it. Now, if you if you realize that, hey, man, I had a rough day yesterday. You've gotten your chores done and you're feeling a little sluggish and you want to take a nap, go back and lay down. Take the nap get what you need out of the rest that you'll have from going back and taking the nap, but you don't rob yourself of the unbelievable valuable time of waking up early. And, and, and that stuck with me. You know, if I have to have a power nap, uh, and, it's, and what's crazy is lately, that hasn't even been necessary. But you know, in those times where I've really been pushing myself, I call them hell weeks, where I'm just really, really pushing myself, I may need to take a 15 minute nap. But it's, it's never going, I'm never going to make up for how I'm feeling in the morning. The morning is is non-negotiable. It's, it's an uncompromising, uh, persisting idea and standard of how I'm going to perform and engage my day. And the more you do it, the more it becomes natural and automatic and the less it will bother you. The more you feel, I mean, there's something about waking up in the morning in the quiet, you know, the home, the house is still. And, and, and no stirring, nobody's talking about what they want to eat, nobody's talking about, uh, you know, and all that. And then when you've got, uh, you know, children who go to school, you know, especially teenagers that are in high school and middle school, and, you know, and then I miss my bus or I want this, or, and all of that stuff starts coming. By the time that starts coming to me, I've knocked off that, you know, knocked off so much. And then I deal with it, get that out the way, and get back to work, but it doesn't upset me. And then because I'm up, uh, and something comes up that has to be dealt with when people start stirring. I'm not like, oh my God, now it's in interfering. I mean, now I'm not gonna be able to do this in time. Now I've got it. And 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 and, and there are gonna be other other areas, and, and I'll talk with you over time about other areas in which you can raise your standards. Raise your standards on how you deliver your product, how you deliver your value to the marketplace that you operate in. Raise your standards. I don't care what you're doing in your business. Raise your standards. I don't care what you're doing at your job. Raise your standards. Uh, and it's real big in the workplace where you're working with someone uh, or working for someone, excuse me. And what happens in the workplace generally is that dreams are de uh, deferred. Uh, individual dreams and aspirations and goals and purposes are deferred for the purpose of fulfilling one huge goal that is owned by some company or corporation. And what happens in this relationship between employee and employer is that the employer is going to pay you just enough to get you to do what they want you to do without you quitting. And you're going to go to work and do just enough to get that paycheck and not get fired. No one is operating on a standard of excellence. And anybody that does come into the workplace and operates on a standard of excellence is uh, accused of being a butt kisser, accused of being crazy. Uh, you know, why are you working so hard? They only pay us this. The thing is, if you don't feel you're being paid what you're worth, if you don't feel you're being paid in direct correspondence to your value, why are you there? Why are you there if you're not being it's compensated if you're not being respected in your value. And what you have to understand is when you go to work for somebody, this is not me taking shots at anybody who has a job. Everybody has to come to a place and an understanding in their own time and mind of what, they're wanting, what they want to do, what they're willing to do, and what they're not willing to accept. I can't tell you that. It's not my job. My job is when you decide you want to do something better, it's to help you get it done. But I'm going to give you something It's real. Uh, again, I don't mean it to come from a condescending place. I want you to come from... I want it to come from a place of really just a revelation. What you have to understand is whatever your employer is paying you is their opinion of what you're worth. So you really need to understand first. That's why understanding yourself and having a sense of self-awareness is so important. So many people are being undersold on who they are and pay based on that uh, pre, uh, perception of value and 
not getting fulfillment. But the second thing, and the final thing I'm going to touch on here is don't make finance your number one, uh, your number one focus, your number one goal. Being within the confines, so to speak, of your vision and the potential to impact the people and the world around you transcends the compensation. And what you will find is that you, as you become uh, more refined, more expanded, more powerful, more potent uh, in what it is you do, you increase the value of what you bring to the table and your compensation will reflect it, whether you are a business person, uh, whether you are uh, an employee, it's going to be an understanding who you are and raising the bar, but doing what you do to be an impact, to bring something to the world around you outside of yourself. Because focusing on money will lead you down paths that will get you in trouble in so many different ways. Let money be a secondary mechanism or a secondary result uh, of what it is you're really truly living for. Function in your purpose and your passion and let the money take care of itself. Because if you become great at what you were designed to do and you use that to empower and help others, you can write your check. You can write your check. You know, and not no, no, not everybody is going to pay you for what you do, but you will find your sweet spot. You will find your market, your target audience, the people who will best benefit from what you do. You change their life, they change yours. That uh, it, it's awesome. You you give them something that makes them better. They pay you for it. You both walk away fulfilled. And that that that's the thing, man. Never stop looking at what ways you can get better. And like I said, today is about raising the standard of how you start your day. Get out of that bed. Engage that secret that the that the morning holds for you. Take advantage of the opportunity that you've been missing because you've been getting up too late. Do all of that. But um, that's it. And like I've said, you know, in previous, um, like I've said in previous uh, uh, broadcasts and live streams and things of that nature, um, always when there's a video, always check the description box. There's always going to be something being offered, uh, some, some, some resources being presented some opportunities to get some pretty great deals, whether it's on a book, whether it's to work with me, whether it's on one of my uh, programs and courses, whatever it is, just check the box. Uh, who, who knows? It may be something that you can really take advantage of, but it's always going to be something there uh, for the people who are willing to put in the time and effort to get something. So I always do that. I'm not going to tell you specifically what it's about. Go check it out. Um, you know, if you're watching it on Facebook, get at me in my inbox. If you're watching it on YouTube, uh, look, uh, hit me up uh, in the comment section or email me uh, and we'll talk about any questions you have. But I'm challenging everybody to live their life on full. I'm challenging you to die on E. I'm challenging you to get the books written, to get the, the lectures done, to start the business, to start the school, uh, uh, to sit up. And, and, and move into that relationship with a new partner or whatever it is that you know you've been driven to do and you've been sitting on. Go after it. Don't take any of the, the new invention. Don't take it to the grave with you. Down eat. Have it all done and left behind to speak of you long after you're gone. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to do what I have to do for the remainder of the day. Uh, I'm hoping to check back in with you guys. I know I have a very busy day. I'll be dropping some things on my YouTube channel live stream. I know that Marion and I have one set up for noon today. Uh, and that one's going to be awesome. So you guys need to stop in and check that out over on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, man, let's make some things happen. Uh, connect with people who are going in the same direction, maybe not in business and particular scope, but in the elevation. Rise with people, find people who want to rise and get together and become a synergistic force that supports other people that are trying to rise. This is not something you do on your own. Stop buying into that self-made bull crap that people like to spew. Uh, 
this is something you do best when you've got other people who are creating energy uh, that you can connect with, other people who are aspiring to heights you see and you aspire to. Uh, that's how you're going to get it. Find some people that have done more than you. Get around them. Find some people that are where you're at and going. Get around them. Then find a few people who desire to go and maybe a little lower than you. You're going to pull those people up. All of that's going to create this unbelievable force of energy that will take you places you've never been before. With that being said, I'm going to check out of here. I absolutely appreciate you guys for stopping by this morning. And remember, stop hitting that snooze button. I'm out of here. It's a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.